Hi, my name is James Forbes, and I'm a systems engineer at Arrowhive Networks, and today I'm going to show you how to configure a wireless LAN in our centralized management platform, Hive Manager. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Arrowhive, we are a wireless LAN vendor, and we've actually created a revolutionary architecture for wireless LANs. We've gotten rid of the single point of failure and the performance bottleneck usually imposed by controller-based wireless LAN solutions. That's right, we got rid of the controller. Now, some of you may be thinking that's a bad thing, but really, think about it. Routers on the Internet are not controlled by a controller. Uh, layer 3 switches in your backbone are not controlled by a controller. Layer 2 and Layer 3 switches in your campus network, no controller. Firewall, no controller. So why is it that we expect uh, controllers to control our wireless LANs? Uh, we've gotten rid of the controller, so there's no single point of failure, and there's no performance bottleneck. We've actually pushed uh, the control down to the access points, uh, and there's no need for a controller. We do still have centralized management, and that's actually what I'm going to show you today. Uh, and instead of just following along with the video, you can actually sign up for your own demo account and do exactly what I'm doing. Uh, so if you go to www.arrowhive.com slash demo, uh, there's a link there where you can actually sign up for the demo tool. Uh, and you fill out your name, email address. When you click uh, the link or when you click uh, the submit, it will actually send you an email. Uh, you can click on the link. It has your uh, uh, username as well as password. And you'll get a Hive Manager demo account just like what I'm showing you and you can actually configure the wireless LAN yourself. And in fact, uh, there's a topology tool where you can plan out the placement of your access points. And if you wanted to, we can actually uh, change that account to an evaluation account, send you some access points, and you can actually demo our product. All right, so let's get started. Okay, after you log in, uh, the first thing you'll see is a Start Here page, and you'll have a choice between Express or Enterprise Mode. For this demo, we're going to choose Express Mode, and uh, we'll have to put in a couple of passwords. Uh, the first one is the new Hive AP password, and I'm going to go ahead and enter that now. And this is an actual password for the AP itself. Uh, so if you need to log on to the command line interface or the, uh, the web interface of the access point uh, to manage it, uh, you know, right off the access point itself. But all the access points are manageable from this central location, uh, central management device that we call Hive Manager. All right, the new Hive Manager password is uh, uh, the password to get into Hive Manager, which we are on right now and you're asked to, to basically change that password uh, when you first log in. We also have some other options. There's an NTP server here. Uh, you can set your time zone. Uh, we'll set this to US Pacific. Uh, then uh, you can put in your DNS server IP addresses. Uh, I'm just going to put some uh, mock DNS server addresses in here. Now, these DNS servers are used by the access points themselves, so if they need to resolve domain names, uh, this is what they'll use. You can also change the brightness of the ac uh, LEDs on the access point, uh, turn them off completely. Uh, this comes in handy. Uh, we have a lot of healthcare customers uh, who like to turn down the intensity of the lights uh, for the patients. The last uh, choice here is uh, the virtual access console. And what this allows you to do is if the access point loses its network connection, loses its gateway, um, it will actually broadcast an SSID that allows the administrator to log on to the access point using a pre-shared key and WPA or WPA2 uh, authentication. Uh, and actually log into the access point so you can get to the command line interface, the web interface, uh, to troubleshoot uh, the access point. You know, you can go drop down to the command line, do pings, trace routes, make configuration changes locally. Uh, and you do have to set a pre-shared key if you enable it, and I'll go ahead and do that now. And there we go. And that's the uh, 
that's the start. Once we're in, we can actually uh, look at our access points. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to create uh, some simulated access points, and we can find that under Tools. If it's the first time that you're logging in, the Hive AP client simulator will actually uh, load up, uh, so you'll see it. You'll get prompted, and you can actually simulate some access points as well. You can simulate access points. You can also simulate clients. Uh, our Hive AP uh, radios each support up to 100 clients. There are two radios per access point, so you can actually support 200 clients. The demo here uh, will allow me go up to go up to 64. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and put 64 in there. I can also create a distribution of uh, different vendors, Apple, Dell, HP, Lenovo, uh, and I'll go ahead and simulate those clients. And there we go. Now, if I go under Monitor and actually take a look at my Hive APs, I'll see that I have uh, those 25 access points uh, simulated showing up in the list here. All right. Now, the thing about this list, when you actually purchase access points, uh, your uh, Hive APs will show up in a list just like this. Now, if you're using Hive Manager and you actually purchase the product and you get uh, Hive access points, now what they're going to do is when you boot them up on your network, they're going to pick up an IP address through DHCP, and they're going to reach out to our Hive Manager online if you're using our Hive Man Manager online, you can also buy a Hive Manager appliance or software for VMware and run it locally within your network. Once those access points pick up an IP address, uh, they're going to reach out to Hive Manager and they'll register and they'll show up in this list like you see here. We uniquely identify each access point by the MAC address. So this IP address can change as often as it wants. So once you push a config to it, it doesn't matter if you move that access point to another location. Uh, it's going to pick up a different IP address, perhaps. doesn't matter. We uniquely identify it by this node ID. So it's very convenient. Your access points will basically find Hive Manager on their own, and then uh, you can go in and actually configure them. So we've actually got a list of 25 access points here. They've all shown up, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the configuration. So I'm going to click on Configuration, got uh, really a couple of options here, SSIDs and Hive APs. So I'm going to go in. If I click on SSIDs, it gives me a list of SSIDs. Of course, we don't have any yet, so we're going to create a new one. So let's go in. I'm going to create two SSIDs today, one for internal access. This would be for you know regular employees. The other uh, SSID I'll create is for guest access. Uh, that'll be for you know guest users that come into your uh, your corporation and, and want to use your network. The guest SSID is actually going to have a firewall rule applied to it uh, that'll allow internet access only, uh, so the guest user cannot get into uh, your local network. Uh, so let's go ahead and create the account for the employee access, and I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, employee SSID. All right. And uh, we can give it a description, uh, SSID for employees. You can make it whatever you want. So in order to secure this uh, SSID, let's go ahead and put in a, a WPA2 uh, pre-shared key. <clears throat> All righty. Uh, we can also uh, leave it open, like in the case of the guest account, we can leave it open and do a uh, captive web portal. We also support WEP uh, and 802.1x, which can integrate into Active Directory, eDirectory, uh, Radius. Uh, and we also have what's called the private PSK, and this kind of gives you best of both worlds. Uh, it, it gives you uh, a pre-shared key, but you can have a unique pre-shared key for every single user. All right, so once you have uh, the pre-shared key in, uh, what you're going to do is down here, every user that connects up to an SSID has to get a user profile. Uh, the user profile basically applies certain things like security, uh, firewall rules, bandwidth rate limiting, all different kinds of things that you can do. Uh, for this one, we're going to select employee. 
uh, this will uh, basically give this user unfettered access once they connect up to the wireless LAN. <clears throat> the VLAN, we're going to select VLAN 1, and the reason for that is VLAN 1 is our default VLAN, and we do no tagging uh, when we're using uh, VLAN 1. If we wanted to do tagging, we could put another VLAN in there. Anything other than 1 uh, will actually tag any packets from this client with that VLAN ID. And then, of course, you would need trunking uh, configured on your switch port to make that happen. Uh, so for here, we'll use VLAN 1. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit Save. And that's basically it. We've created an SSID that once we push this config out to our access points, We'll have that SSID. We'll be able to log in uh, with a wireless device and put in that pre-shared key, and we'd have access to the network. All right, so now let's create uh, a guest SSID. I go ahead and hit New, and we'll call this guest SSID, and we'll give it a description, uh, SSID for guest users. And uh, here what I can do is I can go ahead and leave it open uh, but enable a captive web portal. And we'll go in now and actually create a captive web portal. So I hit the plus mark, and this brings me to the page. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll name this uh, guest uh, CWP for um, CWP for captive web portal. Uh, I have different registration types that I can do here. Uh, there's user authentication, self-registration, and a use policy acceptance. Uh, for today, I'm just going to put in a use policy acceptance. What it'll do is when they get the captive web portal, it'll show, uh, flash up a screen in their browser or a page in their browser, and there'll actually be some use uh, acceptance policy, and then they just uh, accept it, and then they get access to, uh, to the uh, network uh, once, once they do that.